whenever you're ready. Alright, <clears throat> so today I'll be talking about vaping and how the popularity of vaping has grown uh, exponentially among adolescents over the past few years. I'm sure most of you know what vaping is and how it is often mistaken for water vapor, but it is actually fine particles that contain varying amounts of toxic chemicals which have been linked to heart disease, cancer, and much more. I will be talking about these negative health effects today and specifically the ones on the heart and the brain. My first point today is that toxic chemicals affect growing brains, and second, that heart and blood vessels become damaged with vaping. A little background information on vaping in adolescents, it's in a survey done by the CDC in 2017, 38% of high schoolers vape, and 13% of middle schoolers vape. Also, according to the CDC, uh, more high school students uh, use e-cigarettes, which is our vapors, uh, than regular cigarettes. And the use of e-cigarettes is higher among high school students than adults. Um, starting with my first claim, which is toxic chemicals affect growing brains, according to the Office of the U.S. Surgeon General and the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, they state that young people are more likely to take risks with their health and safety, including use of nicotine and other drugs. Youth and young adults are also uniquely at risk for long-term, long-lasting effects of exposing and developing brains to nicotine. These risks include nicotine addiction, mood disorders, and permanent lowering of impulse control. Nicotine is also changes the way synapses are formed, <clears throat> which can harm the parts of the brain that control attention and learning. With that being said, the part of the brain that controls these functions is hindered, and in the long run, this part of your brain does not fully develop. Also, Judy Zelkoff, who works at New York University's Langone Medical Center in Tuxedo, also found vaping-related changes in your genes. In their case, they focused on genes in the brain that play a role in behavior and mental health. She conducted an experiment with animals where she found that 830 genes in the brain's frontal cortex show substantially altered activity. This study shows that animals behave differently when exposed to a baby. Although this study is conducted on animals, this relates the idea that vaping greatly affects the functions of the brain and the things around you. Another factor that affects the brains of adolescents is that they can become addicted more easily. According to the California Department of Health, youth and young adults are uniquely at risk for the effects of nicotine because their minds are not like adults. Not until one turns 25 on average does their brain stop developing. Every time young people make memories or learn a new skill, the brain takes note. Quickly, because addiction is, form of a learning, uh, is a form of learning and adolescents can then become addicted more easily. This shows that teens are prone to addiction. And because of this, uh, this addiction can lead to other forms of smoking. And they're more prone to addiction because their brains are still developing and when their brains are still developing, they can learn these uh, new things faster. Now, this is, moving on to my second claim, that heart and blood vessels become damaged in baby. A study done by Magnus Lumbach, PhD, at the Karolinski Institute in Stockholm conducted an experiment where they had people vape e-cigarettes e with nicotine for 30 minutes on one study day and non-nicotine containing e-cigarettes for the same length of time on another study day in a controlled study. During the first 30 minutes after smoking e-cigarettes containing nicotine, a three-fold increase in arterial stiffness was observed as well as increases in blood pressure and heart rate. This study clearly shows that vaping affects our arteries, and if our arteries are compromised, so is our heart. In addition, this messes with our heart's ability to function. Matthew May, historic PhD, and other researchers at the University of Louisville tested 15 different flavors on human cardiomyocytes, or cells in your heart, that make it contract and supply blood to all the areas of your body. The result, when heated and unheated, the chemicals affected the cells' ability to function. This shows that the flavors in vapes affect our heart. So not only is nicotine affecting our heart, so is the flavoring in the vapes. So even if someone who vapes without the nicotine, which is very common among adolescents, the flavorings in the vapes will damage your heart. Marvin F. Lindman, a chief medical advisor at Consumer Reports, stated that nicotine has short-term negative health effects, like increasing your heart rate and blood pressure. So it can aggravate heart conditions. With, uh, sorry, so with that being said, not only is flavoring, like I said before, affecting on your heart, so if you vape with uh, nicotine, your blood pressure and your heart rate will increase, so your heart is compromised and this is affecting hearts in adolescents. With all the evidence I have presented today, it is clear to see that vaping has negative effects on the heart and brain of adolescents, 
Because one, toxic chemicals affect growing brains, and two, ardent blood vessels become damaged with vaping. Right, Valerie, at the beginning of the speech, there's not really a statement of the proposition. I know what the topic is. I know the general direction you're going because of the secondary points that you have. Uh, the way you've kind of phrased your introduction, it makes it sound like an informative speech. Now, at the end of the presentation, you do have a summary statement that does include something that could work as your proposition, but that ought to be up front at the beginning, and it should be a lot clearer. Uh, the uh, things that count as the preview are, are pretty basic. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I was a little confused because on when you get to the body of the speech, you do have two points, number one, and then there's a number two point, and I wasn't sure if the number two point goes under the first number one point, and that's the second point under number one, or if you'd actually move to point number two. Um, you may be overdoing it on some of the labels. Keep it a, a little bit simpler and make sure that you're using declarative sentences for the claims so that we know exactly which parts are, in fact, inferences and which are transitory, expository information in the presentation. I thought you had good evidence for the most part. It did seem like... Um, you tried to focus on the nicotine issue on the first point uh, pretty effectively. Uh, there's some general information about uh, high school students and their brains and their willingness to take risk. The connection to the nicotine use I think is a little bit thin, but the idea that you've got here is that they're going to learn to become addicted and that's the kind of thing that is really problematic. I, that's an interesting perspective on that. Um, the notion that uh, there's a harm, I think, is, is not as well developed as it needs to be. Some of the evidence that you have is very preliminary. Like you said, you've got uh, some animal studies, and it talks about the effect on the genes, but it doesn't say what the supposed risk is. It just says that there was an effect, there was an impact. Uh, and some of this, I'm not even clear that it is, in fact, a, a harmful risk. Uh, you would assume, for instance, if you were using nicotine, that it would definitely have an effect on your body. That's one of the things that it does. It is kind of a stimulant. So the question is, yeah, how significant is that effect, and how how dangerous is it and that I think is a little abstract uh, at the end of that first point on the second point uh, you do have some information that's more particular about how people are affected by vaping regardless of whether there is a nicotine presence obviously with the nicotine presence uh, it seems to suggest that there is uh, some impact on the heart and on the arteries again the, the idea that you, you go faster or it gets three times as stiff I'm not sure if that's um, uh, an instantaneous reaction or a long-term reaction, uh, that uh, information is seems a little preliminary to be making the inference that you're making, uh, but it's a good starting point on that. And then you also try and make some arguments about non-nicotine-based uh, vaping as a potential problem as well. And I thought that you did okay on that, suggesting that there, again, might be problems regardless of whether or not uh, we have the nicotine content that's going on. Like I said, at the end of the speech, I thought that you had a much clearer statement of what your argument was along with the summary. All right, thank you.